Evening everyone, Hosh here. Welcome to Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. Now this is an extremely interesting game and I will tell you why in just a moment. But before then, I need you to do something for me. Go and grab a pair of headphones. Pause this video right now. Go grab a pair of headphones if you're not wearing some already. And then come back and play the rest of it. Don't worry, I'll wait. Let me tell you about Senua. Her story has already okay, you're back. End, but now, cool. Now listen to this. What's happening? It's breathing. It's breathing. It's breathing. He knows she's getting closer. He can feel her coming closer. She's getting closer. They're watching. They're watching. They're watching. This is a journey deep into darkness. There will be no more stories after this one. What is she doing? Why is she doing this? They're watching. Why isn't she doing she coming? Back? She's doing this for him. She wants to rescue him. He's already I can feel you coming. Shh. Coming. Quiet. So I'm back. Oh. Pretty cool, right? How the voices are all around you and then after a while you swear they're coming from inside your own head. It's very clever sound design and even better than that, it's clever sound design with an actual purpose, a specific end. And that end is to emulate psychosis or more specifically schizophrenia. Um, it's not the only part of the game design to do this either, but more on that later. I have to get a few things out of the way first. The main one being, I'm very sorry that I'm playing another game halfway through the Hosh plays of the last game that I'm doing, DMC Devil May Cry, but there's a few reasons for that and it will make sense, I promise you. The first big reason is that, that this game is made by the same people. Ninja Theory. And I wanted to point out the difference in quality. Now, there's nothing wrong with DMC Devil May Cry. As far as I can tell right now, it's perfectly serviceable. It's not mind-blowing. It's not brilliant. It's, it's essentially the, it's a B game. It, it's good fun, but it's not really meant to be taken that seriously. This game really is supposed to be taken that seriously. This is an art game. If ever there was one, this is an art game. Looking around you right now, you can see that it has a very soul, Soulsian aesthetic. It looks like Dark Souls, uh, but it is a very pretty game. A grotesque game. A dark game. A well, it's got people stuck on spikes in the intro. I mean, what else do you need? But it is... I don't think anybody can say that this game doesn't look astonishingly good. And to think that the it comes out of the same company, it comes out of the same designers, is remarkable. Uh, particularly when you come to the writing as well, later on, that is miles above what we would expect from... DMC Devil May Cry, whose writing is atrocious. I'm sorry, it's absolutely awful. But that's not the appeal of that game, I don't think. What is she think? This, the writing has gone to another level in this game. It's it's remarkably good. Wouldn't you be? Yes, but this was suggested uh, by Lazy Boy who you might know by name or you might not. Uh, his real name is Sean Purcell, and he's a good friend of mine, but he plays games with me sometimes, and his game attack is Lazy Boy. Uh, if you want to know more about what he's like, uh, check out The Many Adventures of Blazing Saddles, the video I did on GTA Online, well, one of the videos I did on GTA Online, called The Many Adventures of Blazing Saddles. I'll leave a link in the description, and you can find that. Uh, but one day he came up to me and he said, there's this game that's been awarded loads of awards at the BAFTA Games Awards. And one of them is Game Beyond Entertainment for its portrayal of mental illness. You might think she's brave to go on this journey on her own. And 
that is, I think, one of the reasons why it was recommended to me to play. Because if there's one thing I know quite a bit about, it's mental disorders. Now, I don't claim to be schizophrenic, and there's a good reason for that. I'm not. But I do know quite a few people who do live with those sorts of problems. I can't talk about them because I don't feel comfortable discussing anybody else's mental issues. But I can certainly uh, talk about some of mine that I've had that this game seems to latch onto and definitely do a good representation of. And maybe share a few insights from just being around uh, the type of people who this game is designed to create feelings of empathy towards. And I think it does it very, very well. At least from what I've seen so far from various other people playing it and just the general reception it's had. I mean, the, the awards it's had have been astonishing. Um, it's had very recently, I think it's won five BAFTA Game Awards. Um, Artistic Achievement, Audio Achievement, Best British Game... Uh, Game Beyond Entertainment Award, which is a big deal in, in trying to cement it as a genuine form of art. And Best Performer, uh, Melina Jurgens, who is currently playing, well, the woman you see on screen right now. Uh, and has been receiving almost universal praise for her uh, portrayal of the role. It got nominated for a lot of them as well, for a lot of awards. It got nominated for a lot of BAFTA awards as well. It got nominated for Best Music, although it lost to Cuphead. Although that's fair, Cuphead's music's amazing. It got nominated for Best Game Overall, but I think it lost to What Remains of Edith Finch. Uh, another arty title. And it got nominated for Game Innovation... But lost to Legend of Zelda, which again is is nothing to be ashamed of. Focus. Look closer. Look. Do not forget my story, uh, Okay, we've got because runes that talk to us. Comes from hell. That's useful. And your fate. I imagine they're going to be the hint system. They say the burning of a which will be nice. Will take you straight to hell's gate. But, God's in the living but yes, this game has sound design in it that constantly gives you the impression that there are voices inside your own head talking to you. Not just inside your own head, actually, but all over the place. Left, right, up, down, back, forward. Uh, coming from specific objects, coming from nowhere in particular. It's Well, here's a prime example. They're now telling me in no uncertain terms that I'm in danger but as you can see everything's going a little bit darker shades of grey it's starting to become warped the voices have started to become warped as well oh I am actually feeling a little bit scared here yeah this is pretty creepy oh, Sky's going absolutely mental as well and this, I think, shows two very common symptoms of schizophrenia. Uh, the first being hearing voices. The most common symptom is hearing voices, which is why it's the one, I think, that is introduced first in the game. And then, of course, uh, visual hallucinations as well. That is a thing that can happen as well. Uh, but the voices in psychosis and schizophrenia they're heard from different locations just like they are in the game they have individual personalities just like they are in this game sometimes they're friendly sometimes they're critical harsh abusive sometimes they they're quiet and as you saw on the boat ride <laughs> into this place sometimes Senua is able to quiet them and sometimes they're overpowering That's a human skull, isn't it? That's the human head. That's that's dark. It's really dark. Oh god, it's moving. Oh god, that's oh, oh, I don't know how I feel about that. Okay. I hear you. 
And my first question, of course, is, is that a visual hallucination? There's no doubt about or is that actually happening? And I think that's going to be a common theme throughout this game. The idea that reality and what you perceive of it are going to be pretty much interchangeable and very difficult to decipher from one another, to differentiate. Uh, again, it is a beautiful looking game, this. It's gorgeous. Just to watch. Um, they've done an excellent job on on just designing every little part of this um, graphically. I am super impressed with that. Curious little tidbit for you. They've actually done brain scans of people with schizophrenia and it, it's demonstrated that the speech area of the brain activates whenever they claim to be hearing voices, meaning that they are actually hearing them, that their brains are mistaking subconscious thoughts for actual voices. So as far as emulating the condition, this game does a spectacular job because it is pretty much exactly as it is shown here, shown, heard here, I suppose. I'm going to struggle with terms just to define this game because I think that's the point of it, is to make you question everything, uh, not to know what is real. Okay, so I'm looking for a pathway upwards and I don't see it. Which is a bit tricky. Oh, oh wait, I think... Is it just this way? Okay. I'm gonna... Okay. Yeah, that, that probably is it. I'm gonna check over here though. There seems to be like a diverging pathway. I think it might be best to, to check that out first. Is there anything down this pathway? No. No, I don't think there is. It's, uh... There's nothing here. Still, I don't mind because it's actually beautiful to look at the rocks in this game. <laughs> I never thought I'd say that about any game, but it's actually kind of beautiful just to watch the rocks. The hey, another one of these rune things. Worlds. The world of men they call Midgard. Sky gods dwell in Asgard. The gods of earth harvest wind and sea. Yeah, just a little bit of uh, lore there. The game takes. Um, I was going to say a little bit. It's actually all of its lore, I think, from, North, from Norse mythology, which is fine because it's an underutilized uh, piece of lore building, I, I think. You, you see a lot of Greek stuff. You see a lot of Roman stuff. You don't see a lot of the Norse stuff, or at least you didn't before the recent God of War, which has also brought that back rather a lot. Maybe it's the new thing to put Norse mythology in your games. Who knows? Okay, now the voices are goading me, saying that I need to jump down. Some of them are saying that once I've jumped down, I made a horrible, horrible mistake. Why did she do that? She shouldn't have done it. And that's subtle. I like that. Uh, not only do the voices berate me for doing the decision that was correct, but they also told me very, well, rather subtly, that um, I've reached a point where I can't go back anymore, so don't even try. So they're also teaching me game mechanics, at the same time as emulating um, auditory hallucinations. New voice, new voice, and this one's subtitled, so he must, yeah, he must be more important than the rest of them. Old fool. 
truth is my truth. It's good to see you. Again. And here is the question, of course. Is what we're seeing right now an actual spirit in the land of the dead? Or a visual hallucination brought on by the memory of someone Senua used to know? And just like that, we're already trying our best to guess what's actually real in this game. Very clever. I love it already. Oh, I have to look at this, I think. Oh, that's confusing. Okay, what do I do with this? I don't understand what... Okay. Ah, there's like a faded M in my vision. Cool. Uh, do I have to... Ah, uh, I've got to look. Okay. Ah, uh, I know. I know. Ah, ah, now this is a very interesting bit. Okay, cool. Right, that is very cool. I'll tell you why. Because it's not just a game mechanic, it's another one of those game mechanics, but it's actually really about the symptoms of schizophrenia. See, people with people with psychosis, actually, not, not specifically schizophrenia, but people with psychosis sometimes suffer from delusions, uh, causing them to believe that sometimes there are stuff like messages and symbols put in seemingly everyday objects that seem not very special for everybody else that are only for their benefit and exist only to tell them something. So, for instance, you could... Um, uh, be watching somebody fill out a crossword in a newspaper and believe that that crossword has a hidden code in it telling them to get milk on Friday or more sinisterly the pattern of dogs barking in the streets at night tells them that they've got a parasite buried in their necks it's not a nice thing to live with but what is nice is the way that the game hasn't just acknowledged that that is a part of of that particular mental illness, but has also turned it into a puzzle mechanic. Try and find this symbol that's special to you, and probably wouldn't be special to anybody else looking at that gate. And try and find meaning in shadows that are falling against walls in just seemingly random ways you can't just wish only you can see the patterns and nobody else I think that's very clever again the voices are yelling at me telling me I'm going to fall here in fact they're not even yelling they're just kind of hissing the world of the dead is ruled by the giantess Hela daughter of Loki the gods feared her bloodline, bad on her mother's side, and yet much worse on her father's. So I think I found that Druth is the guy speaking from the rune stones. And I think he's going to be telling us tutorials and lore. Which I don't mind. It, it fits. Got nothing wrong with that. Your Dillion was sacrificed. And with her, you must bargain. Oh, just crawl in through here. Oh, courtyard. Excellent. I like that. And all of a sudden it's raining. That's... Was it raining before? Yeah, no, it was raining before. Yeah, it, it, it was raining before. I'm just being an idiot. Hell, Hella, Helheim. Whatever horrors lie behind that door. The Norse lie. were not imaginative with their namings. Shh. Someone's here. Okay. Dramatic slow panning of the camera. What am I gonna see? 
Oh, nothing. Well, that was... Oh no, wait. It's all getting warped and weird. Oh. Melina Jurgens, everybody. There, there is an element of having earned that performer award. That was gripping. And now I'm dying. What's going on? Oh my god, there is some serious... nasty shit going on with your arm there, love. Jesus, can still grip a sword with it, though. Fair enough. Oh, God, I've got to fight this guy. Oh yeah, bring him on. This is, oh god, he's still alive. How the hell is he still alive? I stabbed him through the- oh god, there's more. does not bargain. It does not reason. It is rocked. It's and now a hallucination? Or a it will spread premonition of what's to come, as the, the subtitles tell me. Until Again, it's the question. What is real? She's pissed off. Okay. The dark rot will grow each time you fail. If the rot reaches Senua's head, her quest is over. Ooh, shit. And all progress will be lost. Well, all of it. Is this like a permanent death thing? 
Like, I, 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 I delete your progress thingy, because that's, that's horrible. Don't do that. The hardest battles are fought in the mine. It doesn't permadeath you, does it? That is what Dillian taught her. That'd be harsh. Nah, it's not. With every it's not that harsh. I, I, I don't think it'd be that harsh. Grow and soon it will take One us. life. Deal with it. Nah, I don't think so. But for now, at least she still has control of her mind. And she will fulfill her vow. Okay. That, I believe, is the end of the tutorial. Listen to me, Senua. Oh, maybe not. Hella lies behind the gate to Helheim. To open the gate, you must first face the gods that guard it. The god of fire, Surt, and the god of illusion. Raven. Spill their blood to open the gate to Helheim and enter the land of the dead. So yes, that is the end of the tutorial. And in fact, I think the end of the intro. So I think that's probably a good place to leave the first episode. Uh, I really like this game. Uh, extra runestone, hold on. We'll let him talk. You can read it at the bottom anyway. Yes, this game really intrigues me and I want to play a lot more of it. Doesn't mean that I'm going to stop playing DMC, Devil May Cry. I will finish all the games that I start, I promise you. It's just that this one in particular has grabbed me. I think there's an awful lot that I can talk about. About the sort of stuff that this game seeks to accomplish and how well it does it. Right now, I'm pretty convinced it's doing an amazing job. If the amount of awards that it's managed to accumulate wasn't already a good indication of that. In next episode, we'll take on one of these bosses. Until then, hosh out. <laughs> <laughs>